Hey everybody, it's time for another science lab today. And in this unit, we're studying geology and Earth's history. And we've been talking about the layers of the Earth. And today we're asking a question, which layer of the Earth is most dense? Our learning target today is I can calculate the density of the Earth. We did a model of density yesterday in class. And today we're going to further learn about density using this handy equation. Density equals the mass divided by the volume. Here's a picture of your lab page. It will be your responsibility in this lab to write a problem, hypothesis, and draw your setup for the lab. Um, also, there will be four lab stations. Four stations represent rocks from the Earth's crust. One of the stations is slate. Another rock layer in the crust is often basalt. And another rock found commonly in the crust is granite. There's one other lab station which represents Earth's inner core, which is iron. In your lab today, we'll be calculating the density of these rocks. And one is a metal. And you'll be using this lab um, data table. So first, we are, your job is to find the mass. And we'll start with granite. Granite is, here's an example of a reddish granite rock. The first thing you'll do is use a triple beam balance to find the mass. And this is a review. You've done this before. You just place the rock on the scale and then use the sliders to find, to even it out and record your mass in the data table. Your next job is to record the volume. And this is another review. To do this, you'll be using a graduated cylinder and we'll be using displacement. Um, first, what you do is you fill up the graduated cylinder with an amount of water. And it doesn't really matter what amount. And what you do is first you eyeball and measure how much water is in the graduated cylinder. So right now, this graduated cylinder is at 52. Um, milliliters. So then somewhere you write down 52 milliliters. The next thing you do is very carefully tilt the graduated cylinder to the side and take your rock sample. And you do it on an angle because if you drop in the rock straight in, it could go to the bottom and break the glass bottom of the graduated cylinder, which you don't want to do. So just drop it in gently on an angle. And then you measure again the volume indicated in the graduated cylinder. And what you do is you record this value, say 72. And then by subtracting 72 from 52, you can determine the volume of the sample in the graduated cylinder. So this volume would be 20 milliliters. All right, so once you've recorded your mass and your volume, using the equation density equals mass divided by volume, you can determine the density of your rock sample and record it in the data table. For all three rocks, the procedure is the same. The different one is the iron spike. Railroad spikes are made of iron. And you have to use an extra large graduated cylinder for this. The same rules apply. Please turn it to the edge or turn it diagonally to put in the, grad the spike so it doesn't break the graduated cylinder. They are breakable. You will be rotating through the lab at lab stations. There are only four lab stations. So while you're not working at a lab station today, your group and will be responsible for working on the writing a problem, writing a hypothesis, and drawing your setup. Also, after you're done with the lab, you should return to your desk, your assigned seat, and begin to write the conclusion for the lab, where you're talking about what did you learn? Um, what layer of Earth do the three rocks represent? Um, what is the density of the Earth? Which layers of the Earth do you think are most dense and why?